In the summer of 2021, an extraordinary event unfolded in the space industry. Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, had just completed his first journey to space. But what happened next was unprecedented. Over 200,000 people signed a petition requesting that he should stay there. This wasn't just another internet joke. It reflected a deeper frustration with Blue Origin, Bezos' space company, which has spent two decades chasing SpaceX's shadow. For 20 years, Blue Origin has become more famous for its lawsuits and imitation attempts than its innovations. Despite having similar beginnings, both founded by tech billionaires with dreams of revolutionizing space travel, Blue Origin and SpaceX's paths have diverged dramatically. While SpaceX continues to break records and push boundaries, Blue Origin's strategy of replicating their rival's success has led to a series of embarrassing setbacks and delays. Today, we'll explore this fascinating tale of two space companies, one that redefined what's possible and another that's still trying to find its way among the stars. From billion-dollar rocket designs to shocking internal memos, we'll reveal how Blue Origin's copycat approach is actually holding them back from achieving their space ambitions. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Let's dive right in. The autumn of 2008 brought sleepless nights to two billionaires' mansions. In one, Elon Musk lay awake, his company on the brink of bankruptcy after three failed rocket launches, his personal fortune nearly depleted. In the other, Jeff Bezos poured over SpaceX's launch data, his team at Blue Origin meticulously analyzing every detail of their rival's failures. Two men, two approaches, one dream, but only one path would revolutionize space travel. The story begins in 2000, in a modest garage that would birth a space company. Jeff Bezos, flush with Amazon's early success, invested $300,000 to start Blue Origin. His vision wasn't just ambitious, it was revolutionary. Make space travel as routine as catching a flight. The man who transformed how we shop now wanted to transform how we reach the stars. Two years later, another tech billionaire entered the scene. Elon Musk, fresh from PayPal's sale to eBay, didn't just want to join the space race, he wanted to revolutionize it. SpaceX burst onto the scene with an audacity that shocked the aerospace establishment. While traditional rocket manufacturers spent years in development, Musk demanded results in months. The contrast in their approaches became evident almost immediately. At SpaceX's facility in El Segundo, California, the scene resembled a Silicon Valley startup on steroids. Engineers worked around the clock, sleeping under their desks, fueled by a mixture of determination and countless pieces. The pressure was intense, but so was the excitement. Every employee knew they weren't just building rockets. They were rewriting the rules of space travel. Meanwhile, in Blue Origin's secretive facility in Kent, Washington, a different culture took root. Bezos, drawing from his methodical approach at Amazon, established a process-driven environment that prioritized perfection over speed. Every decision required multiple committees Every design change needed layers of approval. While SpaceX embraced failure as a learning opportunity, Blue Origin seemed paralyzed by the fear of making mistakes. 2006 became the year that would define these different philosophies. SpaceX attempted their first launch of the Falcon 1 rocket. The excitement at the launch site was palpable. Years of work, millions of dollars, and countless sleepless nights had led to this moment. Then 33 seconds after liftoff, disaster struck. A fuel leak triggered a fire, and the rocket was lost. The SpaceX team was devastated, but Musk's response was immediate. Pick ourselves up, learn everything we can, and try again. The next two launches also failed. Each failure cost millions, and Musk had invested a third of his personal fortune into the venture. The stress took a physical toll. He would wake up screaming from nightmares, the weight of his company's future crushing down on him. But instead of slowing down, SpaceX accelerated. They analyzed failures in days, not months. They made changes in weeks, not years. During this same period, Blue Origin remained largely silent, working behind closed doors on their own rockets. Their approach to development mirrored their public relations strategy, cautious, methodical, and extremely private. While SpaceX live-streamed their launches, successes and failures alike, Blue Origin rarely revealed anything about their progress. September 28, 2008, marked the pivotal moment. 
SpaceX's fourth Falcon 1 launch succeeded, making history as the first privately developed liquid fuel rocket to reach orbit. The achievement sent shockwaves through the aerospace industry. The impossible had become possible, and the monopoly of government space agencies and traditional aerospace giants was broken forever. This success marked the beginning of an ever-widening gap between the two companies. SpaceX moved quickly from one milestone to another. Larger rockets, reusable boosters, crew capsules. Each achievement seemed to push the boundaries of what private space companies could accomplish. Blue Origin, meanwhile, continued their methodical approach. But the space industry was changing faster than their careful planning could accommodate. The development of Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket tells this story most clearly. Announced in 2016, New Glenn was meant to be Blue Origin's answer to SpaceX's success. Bigger, more powerful, and more capable than anything SpaceX had built. The rocket's specifications were impressive. 98 meters tall, capable of lifting 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit, with a reusable first stage designed for 25 flights. But impressive specifications on paper couldn't mask the crucial difference in approach. While SpaceX had learned from building and flying real rockets, Blue Origin was still perfecting designs and simulations. The contrast was stark. SpaceX's Falcon 9 was launching regularly, landing its boosters, and revolutionizing the economics of space access. New Glenn, despite its ambitious design, remained earthbound. The human cost of these different approaches became increasingly apparent. SpaceX's intense work culture attracted engineers who wanted to be part of history in the making. Yes, the hours were long, often 80 to 100 hour weeks, but the sense of achievement was unparalleled. When a Falcon 9 landed successfully on a drone ship, every employee felt they had contributed to changing the course of human spaceflight. Blue Origin's culture, revealed in a telling 2018 internal memo, showed a company struggling with its identity. Executives debated whether asking employees to work more than 40 hours a week was reasonable, even as their competitors were making history. The memo exposed a deeper truth. Blue Origin's perfect-or-nothing approach wasn't just slowing down their rocket development. It was crushing the spirit of innovation that space exploration demands. The consequences of these different approaches became painfully clear in the years that followed. SpaceX launched hundreds of successful missions, deploying thousands of satellites, sending crews to the International Space Station, and developing the largest rocket ever built, Starship. Each success built on the last, each failure provided valuable lessons for the next attempt. Perhaps Jeff Bezos's famous quote about Amazon, it's still day one, holds a deeper irony. In space, every day brings new challenges, and waiting for the perfect moment might mean missing your chance to make history. SpaceX's remarkable journey from near bankruptcy to 400 successful launches proves that sometimes the biggest risk is not taking any risks at all. As the space race continues to unfold, one thing becomes crystal clear. The future belongs not to those who wait for perfect conditions, but to those bold enough to create them. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into the real story behind America's most fascinating space rivalry, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Elon Musk 24 Hours for more exclusive insights into the cutting-edge world of space exploration. Share this video with fellow space enthusiasts who appreciate the true cost of innovation and leave a comment below telling us, would you rather work at SpaceX's fast-paced environment or Blue Origin's methodical approach? See you in our next video. Breaking news from the International Space Station has NASA engineers deeply concerned. Air leakage rates have reached their highest recorded levels, a staggering 1.7 kilograms per day by April. This isn't just a minor issue, it's been classified as high risk on both severity and likelihood scales according to NASA's September 26 report. The leak, first detected in 2019 in the Russian Zvezda module, has now doubled in size. After 26 years orbiting Earth, our aging space station is showing critical signs of wear. While NASA aims to keep the ISS operational until 2030, these emerging challenges raise serious questions about the station's future. 
With SpaceX potentially playing a crucial role in the station's final chapter, there's a lot at stake for the future of human presence in low Earth orbit. I'm your host at Elon Musk 24 Hours, and today we're diving deep into this critical situation, exploring what these developments mean for space exploration and examining the potential solutions being developed. Let's dive right in. The tense faces at NASA Mission Control tell the story. As air leak readings from the Russian Zvezda module flash across their screens, controllers exchange worried glances. What started as a minor issue in 2019 has escalated into something far more serious. Air is now escaping the International Space Station at an unprecedented rate of 1.7 kilograms per day. The gravity of the situation becomes clear when we look at NASA's internal risk assessment documents. They've rated this leak at the highest possible level, five out of five for both likelihood and severity. In NASA's carefully calibrated world of risk management, that's essentially a red alert. Robin Gayton, ISS program director, attempted to calm fears during a recent briefing by announcing a one-third reduction in leak rates after repairs. But behind the scenes, the reality is far more complex. Engineers working around the clock face a daunting challenge. How do you fix a leak that's hidden behind layers of sophisticated equipment in zero gravity? The ISS wasn't designed for easy repairs, especially of this magnitude. Think of it like trying to fix a leak in your basement while wearing thick gloves, except the basement is wrapped in thermal blankets, surrounded by delicate electronics and floating 250 miles above Earth. Every repair attempt risks compromising other systems, making each decision a careful balance of risk versus reward. But here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. The leak in the Zvezda module isn't just about losing air. It's becoming a symbol of the ISS's larger challenges. After 26 years in orbit, this football field-sized structure is showing its age in ways that even its designers didn't fully anticipate. The station faces constant bombardment from micrometeorites, each impact leaving microscopic damage that accumulates over time. Temperature fluctuations as the station moves between sunlight and shadow stress its materials. Cosmic radiation gradually degrades everything from electronics to structural components. It's like an aging athlete trying to maintain peak performance while dealing with increasingly frequent injuries. The political landscape adds another layer of complexity. While NASA aims to keep the ISS operational until 2030, Roscosmos has indicated they might withdraw after 2024. This timeline discrepancy creates unprecedented challenges for both agencies. How do you maintain a facility designed for international cooperation when key partners might leave early? NASA's response to these challenges reveals both ingenuity and desperation. They've signed an $800 million contract with SpaceX to develop a spacecraft capable of safely deorbiting the station when the time comes. But this isn't just about planning for the end, it's about acknowledging that the ISS's days are numbered. The race to replace the ISS has attracted some of the biggest names in aerospace. Axiom Space, once considered NASA's golden child with a $140 million contract, envisioned building modules that would attach to the ISS before becoming independent. Their ambition matched their early funding, $500 million raised at a $2 billion valuation. But recent internal documents reveal a company struggling with severe cash flow problems and missed deadlines. Former employees speak of a startup run like a government program, with nearly 1,000 workers but insufficient work distribution. Engineers often found themselves 